frequent stress. Okay, this is a big, huge one. Mm -hmm. Huge, huge. Okay, and as Judith mentioned, which is at the top here, financial stress. Yes, doesn't mean that, like we said, in all low socioeconomic groups, you're going to always see abuse, but it does put a lot of pressure on parents. Job related, you're, you also mentioned that, Judith. Um, legal problems, and I think somebody mentioned, or somebody mentioned custody or going through a custody. So if you're trying to deal with litigation and legal issues and a custody battle of some sort, that's a lot of stress right there. You have some illness or condition that you're also trying to manage. Frequent crisis, high stress, can cause a parent to take it out on their child. Okay? And so for the most part, um, you know, oftentimes there's good, there are good parents out there, but there's conditions when they're really all put on there that that's when a lot of the stuff might happen. Okay? And one of our other trainings will talk about the process. You know, what actually happens with these cases, when it is substantiated, what does that mean? Are they going to just pull the kids right away? You know, what's the process? Are they trying to preserve the family? Um, you know, what do we know about it? What happens? You know, Lisa, another one under legal problems that I, I don't think I've heard mentioned today is um, a spouse is having um, to go to jail. Mm -hmm. I've run across that a few times. That, that dad has to be incarcerated and yeah. it causes a lot of stress on the kids and the family. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I'm not sure why that I didn't find that because that, I, I've heard of it a lot. I mean, it's yeah. come up a lot yeah. with families where a family member was incarcerated and just, yeah, a lot of stress. Um, we already mentioned kind of the history of um, being abused and mistreated, but what does that mean exactly? Um, well, we do often see with that someone then that has a poor self-image, um, poor coping skills, because again, their role model was in fact someone who abused them. And how do we typically parent like? How we were parented. Yeah. We typically will parent how we were parented. So, um, you know, even people that are educated and have a lot of insight particularly under stress, <laughs> you often will find, I sound just like my mom, you know, I sound just that we revert to that. So um, you have to kind of continually evaluate and, and be aware of that. It's not always easy when you're really stressed out. Um, drug alcohol problems, definitely high correlation, as we said, and just limiting the parent's ability. Um, and we, uh, as I mentioned before, that most abusive parents are normal, uh, relatively few are mentally unstable or would be considered criminals. Okay, so you don't want to quickly necessarily think that they're, you know, psychotic or they have a mood disorder and maybe that they're just under this huge amount of stress, they lost their job, their husband was thrown in jail. And I can't imagine all that, but there are some people that just get one hit after another and sometimes the timing coincides. Um, but definitely drug alcohol is a huge correlator of abuse in general. Okay, so some other risk factors. Multiple stresses, um, increased number of crises in the parents' lives, which many of the families that you guys work with really have a number to deal with right now. Um, I mean, just their children's uh, condition and then the how that has actually affected the parents, um, how that's affected the entire family, even the extended family, if they have other people in the household living with them, and then as Judith had mentioned and some of the other, some others mentioned, perceptions of society on this disorder or this condition and what you may have done you know, to contribute to it. Limited economic social support in times of stress. Um, which is, you know, part also of when you're doing your assessment is to try to ascertain, you know, what resources they have um, for support. And definitely I want to emphasize having emotional support, which I know a lot of you guys, that's your role for them, <laughs> as well as coming in as specialists and working with their children, but um, for them having someone to talk to and maybe vent and the challenges they're dealing with, um, providing the emotional support. Violence in the surrounding community, I mean, it's a, a fact of life that we have a lot of 
violence that you know we're exposed to, our children are exposed to. Um, and we just seen that the other day on Saturday. So you know, my kids have been asking me all kinds of things. It was all over the news, and you know, we had it on pretty much all day. And so my son has been following it <laughs> and keeping me updated on it because he's, you know, he's always been into the news and wanting to know everything that occurs and looking into the the background of the of the guy. And it's just, you know. I mean, you may not ever get an explanation there. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. What's the news? What happened? Uh, about the congresswoman being shot? Did you hear that? In oh, Tucson? Sure Saturday. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Very yeah. Sad. Yeah. Well, I'm on the other end. It's like inundated <laughs> with it. It seems like everything I turn on, it's it's there. Yeah. And then last night on the news, they profiled all the victims. So I seen that the whole every single one in their background and all of that. There was a nine year old, mm -hmm. you know, shot there, and then even talked to other people that were present and the trauma, you know, that they went through in their kids. Um, anyway, so what the point is here is that violence just in the in the community and maybe there that may underlie, you know, some of this, especially with the stress compounded and then all these different images and things that are happening. Um, and groups living in poverty. Poverty is a huge part. We mentioned financial and um, does cause a, a lot of stress on parents. And the largest statistic, as we mentioned, is neglect, um, which by and large, if you don't have the money for food, right, you wouldn't think that a child is going to, I mean, a parent's going to lose their child because they, they don't have means to support their child. But there are many cases where it's in fact determined that, you know, they're being neglected. So with minimal, they're able to provide them, you know, they're, they're not doing that. And um, what happens is you see some parents that get so um, apathetic or they, they can't find a way out, basically. You know, they're in a hole and they can't find their way out of it. And um, the children suffer as a result of that. So, and that's where we want to make sure we're providing the support, the resources to get them up and running and back on their feet and support. And that's what the system will do. And when we talk more about the system itself, it's really designed to get that family <laughs> intact, back intact. It wasn't designed to take them apart and fragment them. And we'll dot these two out, and this one over here we'll place over here. That wasn't the intent. It was really the intent to identify where the problems are and then really try to, if possible, repair the family. And so, so, in some counties, they've done a better job than others, and some they haven't done so well. Um, actually, I think I went through everything pretty quickly. You guys have any questions? 